What's up, Coon Squad? It's your boy back again, Jody motherfucking Keith, here with another story time. Now, this story is a story that I've told more than any other story that I've ever told ever. Uh, from my previous days, driving a cab, even an Uber, being from New Orleans, the number one story, when you, especially when you drive tourists around, is tell me your Katrina story. Okay. All right. I can tell you the Katrina story. So, here we go. Everybody wants to hear it. 2005, August day. Katrina was hitting late Sunday night, early Monday morning. Now, me at the time, I was 17 years old. I was hustling newspapers. I used to do a door-to-door -door deal, knock on the door. Hey, you want to buy some newspapers? Help me out. What's up, baby? And I was damn good at it. <laughs> and then we ended up working uh, through the Friday. And then my boss was like, hey, we're going to go to Memphis. Because the guy who owned the sales account in New Orleans also owned the account in Memphis and was like, look, he's going to hold us down. We're going to stay in his house. Let's roll up there. And I used to like, uh, be really good at newspapers. So I was in the car on that Friday and I was like set to go to Memphis. And a friend of mine called me up, him and his twin brother. They were really big cube drafters before cube existed. They had this big box of revised where they just redrafted revised cards and it was great. And they were like, we're just going to draft, dude. We're going to ride this thing out. None of us are in the military. This is going to be like a war story to tell our grandkids. And I was like, hell yeah. All right, cool. I don't plan on joining the military. Let's fucking do it. <laughs> and so we we're going to ride it out. So I jumped out of the car with my boss on that Friday, intent to ride it out. We were going to go out Saturday, drinking, chilling, hanging out, playing cards. And then Sunday afternoon, they're going to pick me up at noon from my mom's house was the whole plan. Okay, no big deal. So from that time period, Friday evening to Sunday afternoon, I turned down at least 30 rides. Everybody was like, Jody, come with us. We're going here. We're going to Tallahassee. We're going to Orlando. We're going to Memphis. We're going to fucking everywhere under the sun. Texas, plenty of Texas trips. Everybody was going to Texas. And I was like, nah, man, I'm riding it out. I'm riding it out. And they're like, you're fucking crazy. And I'm like, yeah, dude, I got to tell my grandkids. You don't fucking get it. You don't know what it's like. Fuck, we got to tell the grandkids. They're like, well, what the fuck if you die? I said, it's a hurricane. What's the worst that can happen? Right? <laughs> God. So up until that point, though, if you live in New Orleans, there wasn't a big storm until like since 1964. Was that Hurricane Betsy? I don't know. I wasn't around. But uh, that storm was like the worst one that had happened since. Like Hurricane Katrina since Betsy. So nobody really takes hurricanes serious. Normally the culture behind hurricanes coming is that you just kind of throw a party. And you call your boss and tell him that you're evacuating. So that gives you like three days off. And then you just have like a big ass hurricane party for like three days. And you might lose power, but you got beer. So everything's going to be good. And so sure enough... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right, we're going to ride this thing out. And Saturday night happens. All my family leaves. My mom, she lives close to the lake where they were expecting some heavy storm surge. Also lived in the hood at the time, right? So like, uh, which most of the time that I've been living. <laughs> and so like, I was like, all right, cool. Uh, we're going to ride this thing out. No big deal. My mom left. My aunt left. Everybody's gone. I'm in my mom's house at 1230. They were supposed to pick me up at noon. My friend. We're going to ride it on a third floor apartment. Figured that wouldn't be that big of a deal because the third floor is not going to get flooded. And then 1230 rolls around and I called my boy up. I was like, yo, man, when you come to get me, I'm over here ready to go. He's like, dude, did you see what happened? I was like, no, what happened? Because I seen him the night before. He was like, dude, it's category five now. And I was like, yeah, last night it was category four. And he's like, yeah, it's category five now. And I'm like, yeah. Well, last night was Category 4. The difference between Category 4 and 5 is 15 miles an hour winds when we're talking about already being 160 miles per hour winds. So at what point does it fucking matter? It doesn't, <laughs> pretty much. And so I was like, all right, bro, like, no big deal. What is that? He's like, yeah, well, they're saying that, you know, <clears throat> it's Category 5 and we don't really know what to expect. They said we're not going to have running water or electricity for two weeks. I said, we already talked about that. Uh, and he's like, yeah, but we don't know what to expect. I said, expect not having running water or electricity for two weeks, bro. We're going to ride it out, tell our grandkids. What about our fucking grandkids? And he was like, dude, <laughs> we got family in Philly. We ain't seen it in a while. We're just going to dip out and go to Philly. And I was like, you got to be shitting me, bro. And he's like, yeah. I was like, well, you got room for one? Because I need to get the hell out of here. <laughs> so I was going to ride it out with somebody. I want to ride it out by myself. I didn't even have a gun. I didn't have a 
fucking Vienna sausage. I didn't have a dog to keep me company. Like, <laughs> bro, let me ride with you. He's like, no room. I'm like, <sighs> so then I sat in the house for like five hours and I was just like, fuck man, I'm like in the hood, it's going to be looting, I'm fucking going to get flooded, I ain't got no fucking food, I'm like, this is shit, dude, this party is going to shit, so then I was like, oh. so then I was calling everybody back, I was like, yo, you going, oh, we already left, man, you should have left with us, I said, yeah, no shit, <laughs> Called next word, hey man, where you at, man? Oh, we been in Texas, bro. And I'm like, oh shit, you should came with us. Yeah, no shit. So then I'm just sitting there for like about an hour, just chilling, and I'm like, fuck, I ain't got no beer, I ain't got nothing. What am I gonna do? And then a friend of mine called me, who I ain't seen in over a year. My boy called me up and he was like, hey man, where you at? I said, I'm at my house. He's like, dude. My dad wants to take this extra car and the grandma and the two dogs, and we're all going to Orlando. And I was like, I got a backpack, let's fucking roll. <laughs> so I'm coming to pick you up right now. I said, hell yeah. So then I slid out with my boy with grandma and the two dogs and bumper to bumper traffic. It took me 24 hours to get through Mississippi, it felt like, because they had everything blocked off. And then sure enough, we ended up uh, like staying in a shelter in Tallahassee for a day or two and showering at the YMCA and just hanging out. I finally made it to Orlando to his family's house and it was like a decently sized house and we were just hanging out and after a week I ended up taking a bus to Memphis where I probably should have went in the first place it was like a 24 hour bus ride from Orlando to Memphis and that sucked and I stayed up there for a while and people were nice in Memphis you know I got I got I got some heart for Memphis I love Memphis I ain't gonna lie for many reasons but uh man I almost ended up staying in Memphis too and then I guess I could go further on in the story, but, uh, you know, I was going to school in Memphis, which was cool, and they were going to match the scholarship that I had, which was pretty cool, and then I got some money, my cousins had just got out of jail, and I was looking for my cousins, so I came home after buying a car with my Red Cross check, and I was looking for my cousins every day, because they have this thing called fall break in, in the world, which is something we don't have in New Orleans, in New Orleans we have Mardi Gras break, which is like... In the spring, fall break blew my mind when I was in school. They were like, oh, yeah, fall break. You get off, like, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday. I was like, what the fuck? I said, I ain't never heard of fall break. But Mardi Gras, we got off, like, the whole week. So that makes sense. <clears throat> so on fall break, I came back home. And every day, I would stop by where my cousin lived. And I never saw him, never saw him, never saw him. And on the last day when I was going to leave, because I was bringing my mom home, because she ended up staying in Memphis for a little while. And I was going to ride back, and I just bought this little hoopty for like 400 A 1998 Nissan Stanza. What a car. What a car. Nissan Stanza? Nissan Stanza? Yeah, Stanza. Never heard of that car before, I bet. <laughs> $400 my Red Cross check. And sure enough, I rode it to New Orleans, and I was riding it back. And on the last day when I was leaving, I stopped one more time while I was headed west. I got off of the exit, stopped it. And sure enough, my cousin was there. He just got out of jail. And I was like, hell yeah. And he's like, dude, I want to go to Memphis with you. I said, all right, come on. He's like, why don't you just stay here, though? I was like, because I got to go back to Memphis. And I went back to Memphis, and it was crazy because I went up there, and we hung out. He stayed there because my mom stayed with, with my boss at the time. My boss had a big house. He's a pretty successful dude. I was going to school up there, and I was like, Pff. he was like, dude, I just let's just go back home. I was like, all right. So I turned all my school books, rode back home and just dipped out and shit man if i would have stayed in memphis man my life would have been a lot different than what it is now but it's crazy how little things add up to it if i just stayed in the car i wouldn't went to memphis in the first place and skipped the whole headache wouldn't have had the nice party saturday night though so give or take right <laughs> wouldn't have been scared shitless on sunday when i realized the situation i was in but it's funny how circumstances go and you know natural disasters are something you really shouldn't mess with but uh you know when you're young and dumb you do shit like that and uh, you know, crazy time. It was a crazy time. And I know a lot of people, half my family, my cousins were in the Superdome when that shit collapsed. And they ended up going to uh, Houston for two years. And people were scattered all over the place. But it was really nice seeing people really taking care of you, being from Louisiana and looking out for you after disaster, which was really nice. You know, goodness in people. You don't see as much nowadays as you used to. So maybe I'm reminiscing on a natural disaster. Is that nuts? <laughs> oh, Lordy B. But anyway, that's the Katrina story. It's the most 
most commonly requested story whenever I drove a cab. Oh, man. Every time you would get on the interstate to bring somebody to the airport, they'd be like, oh, shit, man. Tell me that New Orleans. Tell me what's different from Katrina. And I was like, that's what you always fucking want to know. Well, now you know it, too. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell for more story times. One love, baby. Good vibes. Catch you on the next one.